In this video, I wanna take a look at the Capture One workspace a little more in depth than I've covered before. I wanna show you uh, how it's laid out, what the different areas are, and reveal some things that you might not know about the workspace. And then I will show you at the end of the video how I set up my workspace as well. So when you first open Capture One, uh, you're going to see that you have a toolbar across the top, tool tabs down the left-hand side, and a browser down the right-hand side with a viewer in the middle. This is different than Lightroom in that everything you see in Capture One is right on screen. There are no separate pages. You don't have to go from library mode to develop mode. Everything is here at once. It's right in front of you. What you also want to note is that when you are looking at the viewer here, you are always seeing the what your proofing is. You are always soft proofing in Capture One. If you go up to view, you can enable recipe proofing and then your proofing will be determined by the export recipe that you have currently selected. So if you have an export recipe that's specific to your printer, it will show you exactly what that is. So what you can do is you can disable recipe proofing, which is something I do. Then I set my proof profile to Adobe RGB, but if you wanna set it to one of your recipes, you can, and it will use the color profile that you have selected in that recipe. But if you have a printer, like I have an Epson SP3880 on the table behind me, and I use hot press bright, then I can select that and it will give me the soft proof profile for the image that I'm looking at. I'm going to set that back to RGB. So let's take a look at the toolbar at the top. We have across the top a bunch of buttons. We have our cursor tools that we can select and we have all these other buttons. We have a nice little learn button. So if you're new to Capture One, you can click that and get tool tips and tips about how to use Capture One. If you right click on this, you can set it to icons only or you can have it icon and text. But if you go to customize, then you have all these other buttons that you can put up here into the toolbar. Now I don't need this learn button, so I can just drag it out and drop it right back into there. And then I can uh, hit done and that's automatically saved. What you can also do is you see these are all spaces. Everything can be moved, even your cursor tools. If you want them all the way over to the left, you can move your cursor tools there. You can move them all the way to the right. I'm just gonna keep them in the center where they typically are when, when you start Capture One. Click done and that's saved. Over here on the left, we have our tool tabs. We have right now the library tab, there's a tether tab, the shape tab, we have the style tab, adjusts tab, and we have the refine tab. If you click on these three dots or if you right click in this blank area, you get the same menu. You can change your workspace to default workspaces. You can set it to icon and text. I'm gonna set that back. You can add tool tabs. You have the export tool tab that you can add with all the setup export tools already there. That's great to have in your tool tabs at the side. I'm just going to go to the quick toolbar here. What I can do is if I want to remove this rotation and flip, if I click on this, it will open. If I click here, it will open. If I want to get rid of this tool, I just click on the hamburger menu, the three dots, the more menu, whatever you want to call it. And I'll just click remove tool. If I want to remove the crop tool, remove tool. The sharpening tool, remove tool. Same thing, same process. Remove tool. High dynamic range, remove tool. Now, if I wanted to add the high dynamic range tool back, I can just right click, add tool, then I can search for high dynamic range and it is right there. If I wanted to add the smart adjustments tool, I am just right click, go to smart adjustments, and there it is. If I wanted to add any other tool, the navigator tool, I can add that. Let's bring that to the top and leave that there. Now, if I click on this navigator tool, you'll see that it says move tool to scrollable area and that takes it to the bottom. Here, there's a thick line that separates the pinned area where all these tools are currently set up in the pinned area and this is the scrollable area below it. So I could take this tool and say move to scrollable area move to scrollable area, move to scrollable area, move to scrollable area. And then uh, the, the histogram is in the pinned area. It's pinned at the top and everything else is in the scrollable area. Maybe I want the navigator to go back to the pinned area. It just moves it up there. And then I can just drag it above my histogram to place it up there. 
Now let's say I wanted to move the smart adjustments to the pinned area. What I could do is instead of coming to the menu and say move to pinned area, I can just drag it and you'll see there's an orange line. I can just move it to the spot I want it in the pinned area and now it's in the pinned area. If I wanted to move it back to the scrollable area, I can just move it right back to the bottom and it's there. If I wanna remove it, simple again, remove the tool. Customizing the workspace is really easy to do. So over on the right side of the interface, we have the browser and the browser it can be expanded. If you drag it out here from the left, we have three different modes. We have a grid mode, which you can see here in effect. We can drag this out a bit further and you can see a lot of grid. We have a list mode, which creates a list of the files and film strip mode. Film strip mode is kind of like grid mode, except you cannot adjust the size of the thumbnails. The size of the thumbnails automatically scales with the size of the browser. Now if we go up here to view and scroll down to customize browser, you'll see it says place below. That means that we can move the browser from the right side of the screen to below our viewer. If you just click that, the browser moves below. And now that this is in film strip view, you can take that and we can raise that up and you can see the film strip automatically adjusts to the size of that browser at the bottom of the window. List view also works here. The grid view also works here. If you pull the, the grid up, you can see the thumbnail size is determined by the size you set here in the slider. Whereas in thumbnails, there is no size adjustment and it is always just going to be the size of that bar. You'll see the bar is at the bottom. That's not something I prefer, so I'm gonna use that keyboard shortcut and set it back to the right. Now the next thing to look at is the viewer. Here we have the toolbar for the viewer. If you right click in the viewer space here, you can change the color of the background and that defaults right now to very dark can keep your workspace dark so you can focus on your image. But if you're going to be printing an image in a magazine, what you might wanna do is uh, set that to white, or if you know it's gonna be matted, you can set that to white. This little button right here increases the size of the proof margin. So now you have something that looks a lot more like a mat. If you wanna change the size of that proof margin, you can just go to edit, preferences, under appearance, right here, proof margin, and you can just increase that and that gives you something that looks a lot more like a matted print. I'm gonna turn that off and set this back to very dark. Now this button right here toggles the view from primary to multi-view. Right now it's in multi-view, which means if I select more than one image, it's going to show me more than one image in the viewer. If I turn this off while these are selected and go to primary view, it's only going to show me the primary variant that is selected, which you can see in the browser is indicated by a slightly thicker line around that image. I'm just gonna go back here and as I click through, I can just click on that and, and which one I set becomes the primary. Then I turn multi-view on and now I can see both images. Resetting that. This little drop down here, it shows us what layer we are working on right now. So if I go to the adjustments and I open the layers tab, there's currently no layer. If I add another layer, I'm gonna add a filled layer and call it grade. And that's where I might apply a color grade with the color balance here. Now you can see I am working on the grade versus working on the background and in the tool, it's actually switching the layer that I am working on. I'm gonna delete that layer and go back to the default space. If you're coming from Lightroom, Capture One has your back. Just go to Workspace and Migration. You'll see the layout looks very similar to Lightroom's with all the tools set up in the same order and the nice film strip here at the bottom in the same way that you would see it in Lightroom. What you don't have though is the library on the left because all your tool tabs move together. Your library you can find right here and then all your adjustments in the Adjustments tab. So if you're moving over from Lightroom, you just wanna get in there and get started. You can use the migration workspace that they've set up for you. And then once you get familiar with it and comfortable with it, you can start moving the tools around, customizing the workspace to your liking, which is what I'm going to show you now. So I'm gonna go up to Window and Workspace and KPR. And this is how I have my workspace set up. And I'm gonna explain why I have it set up this way. Now, the first thing you'll see here is that I have everything that I need right in front of me. I've got a nice big viewer in the middle. I've got my browser 
browser with a lot of thumbnails off to the right and I have all of my tool tabs and tools on the left. Everything is here. I don't need to go searching for anything. I can scroll very quickly through my images to find an image that I might be looking for and click to the image that I that I need. With my tool tabs, I work from left to right, set up like this is my workflow. So I have the library, I can see and organize my images. I can filter them based on color tags and ratings, things like that. Then I have my metadata. I have the keyword library, keywords and metadata set up there. Then I come to my shape tab where I keep my lens corrections, my grid crop. Then I have styles and presets and my adjustment clipboard is there as well. Then I have the adjustments tab. And this is where I do most of my work. Uh, I've got the base characteristics. I've got layers. I've got smart brushes, smart adjustments. Everything is set up uh, as I need it. Then I have white balance exposure, high dynamic range, and the other tools I need to make the regular adjustments that I typically make on every image. After that, I go into coloring. Now I might want to do a black and white conversions. I might want to do some skin tone editing, and I might want to do some advanced color editing. From there, I will go into refine, and then I have noise reduction, film grain, vignetting, sharpening, and any spot removal that I might want to do. After that, I have a custom tool tab that I created that I call grading. And I use this tab specifically for color grading. You can see I have the black and white here. If I'm doing black and white conversions, I can just turn that off and on. Then I have three separate instances of the color balance tool. You can add multiple instances of the same tool in the same tab or in many different tabs. You can see I have the layers tool in almost every tab here. I have color balance. I work my highlights, midtones, and shadows. Then next I have my exports tab and I have all my export recipes here. I have an export summary, the formatting location, everything I need to export images. And then my final tab is my export queue so that when I set a number of images to export, they will all show here and I can see how they are processing. And so that's how I set up my workspace in Capture One. Please hit that like button if you found this helpful. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more videos like this and have a great day. Thanks so much. Take care.